Hello crafty friends, welcome to episode three in our series on using ink pads in card making. So far we've done blending, swiping, smushing, splattering and lifting and today we're going to look at stamping. So I'm going to mostly use Distress Oxides today but I will mention other ink pads along the way. But if you've got any kind of water reactive ink you should be able to do these techniques so do give them a go. So I've got my Tim Holtz stamping platform out here because I'm going to use a rubber stamp and this will accommodate rubber stamps. They're a bit thicker than photopolymer or silicone stamps. We're going to start just by inking it up. So simple stamping. I'm just going to do the middle portion of this stamp. So I'm pressing my ink pad onto my stamp pushing some pressure down in the middle to get the felt pad to contact the stamp. And then I've got some smooth white cardstock here. I'm gonna press that down with my air hockey pusher tool thing. There are lots of different things you can use to apply pressure. You can use your hand, but I find that quite painful sometimes. So I'm gonna give that a few seconds for the ink to transfer. And there we have a lovely stamped image. Now I'm going to add some scattered straw up here. I've just re-inked this ink pad so it's quite juicy. Same with this one, I've just re-inked it. This is salvaged patina. So now I've got three bands of colour but I want to have a bit of a blend between these here and this here. So I've inked up the pink and the yellow and I've got my pink brush here. Just gonna go over the join. Give it a little bit more. And gradually build up that color where the two colors join together. There, see it's a bit smoother there now and I'm going to do the same at the blue end. And this is the beauty of using a stamp positioner is if you keep your paper still and your stamp still you can stamp again and again and again and everything will be in the right position. You can also ink your stamps up with a blending brush. So get some ink on your brush and go in like that. I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that there. So I've got a nice impression and I've got a relatively smooth blend between each colour. So that's simple stamping with a bit of a two-tone effect. I've kept the ink on this stamp and added a tiny little bit more just to boost the colour a bit. But now I'm going to do wet or watercolour stamping. So you have ink on your stamp, you take some water, you mist it on. You can be quite generous or you can only add a little bit, it's up to you. Take a piece of card and then stamp the wet stamp. And then what you get is a big splodgy inky mess. Now, as you can see, you get a kind of watercolour effect. So this is a bit wet, so I did over wet this one a bit. But you can see the pattern here, but the colours have diffused in the water that I've added. I'm wondering if I can get another print off of this. So that's still wet and it's still got some ink on it. So I will add that there and press it down. And there, that's a bit clearer. You can still see the pattern of the stamp in most places, but it's got a lovely soft diffuse watercolour look. So if I compare the two, this is dry stamping as it were, just using the ink 
as it comes off the ink pad and this is with some water spritzed on. Our next technique is heat embossing with coloured inks. So I've got an old sock here filled with corn flour, also known as cornstarch. You can use an anti-static powder tool or you could use talcum powder. And all this does is it kills any static that's on your paper that might attract stray embossing powder. It also removes any greasy fingerprints or dries any wet ink. And I'm going to use peacock feathers here to ink up my rubber stamp. So I'm happy with that impression. I'm now going to dip it into my clear embossing powder. Because Distress Oxides contain some pigment, they dry quite slowly, which means that when you stamp them, you can usually pop them into your embossing powder and the embossing powder will stick straight to them. Some other inks, dye inks, for example, will dry more quickly and won't take the embossing powder on their own. I'll show you what we can do about that in a minute. So that has clear embossed over the peacock feathers and given a lovely, glossy, crisp embossed impression. So I don't have many coloured embossing powders in my collection because I will stamp with my Distress Oxides and use clear embossing powder over the top. Now if you're using an ink that doesn't stay wet enough long enough for you to emboss over it with clear embossing powder. Stamp your pattern with your colourful ink and then take an embossing ink pad. So this is Versamark, this is the one I use. I've treated myself to a new ink pad. Then add that to your stamp. Stamp that on top of your coloured ink and then dip it in your embossing powder and that way you'll be able to clear emboss over your coloured inks even if the coloured inks themselves don't stay wet enough long enough to grab onto the clear embossing powder. So I'll show you how well a Catherine Pooler ink does. This is Aquatini from the Party Collection. These do stay wet for a bit longer than other dye inks. Obviously, you need to make sure your ink pad is pretty juicy. So we've given that three goes with the ink pad. We'll just see if it will pick up enough embossing powder. So that has taken some embossing powder, but not everything is covered in it. So I'm just going to dust that with the antistatic powder tool to get that powder off. Pop that back in there and I should be able to stamp straight over the top because I'm using a stamp positioner. I will clean this because I don't want to contaminate my new ink pad with green ink. So I'll just press that down onto there with a sticky ink. Pop it back over there, press it down. And now that has taken the embossing powder because of the sticky ink. So that's the Catherine Pola. That is the Distress Oxides. And now both of them have got a nice glossy shine to them. So while we've got the embossing equipment out, we'll look at another embossing technique using inks. And that is emboss resist. So I've added embossing ink, the clear ink, to my rubber stamp. I've treated this with my corn flour. And now I'm going to stamp that. The embossing ink does stay sticky for quite a long time. So I find sometimes the easiest thing to do is do all my embossing ink stamping, then do all my embossing rather than doing it a bit at a time. So I'm going to stamp this one twice so I can show you how this works with two different inks. I'll dip this in clear again, but you could use white or you could use any colour you want really. 
and I'll heat this with my heat tool. When heating clear embossing powder, you can tell when it has melted because it goes shiny. At the moment it's dull, but when it's melted, it's shiny. So that's all melted and it's all cooled. And I'm going to do the emboss resist part, which is where you blend some ink over the embossed image. And then you can take a clean cloth, like a microfiber cloth or a paper towel, and buff the color off of the embossed area. So the melted powder is resisting the water-based ink and appears through the color. So here is the Catherine Pooler in Aquatini again. And you can do the same. I find I get better blending if I use a mixed media paper for this because it stops the ink soaking in too quickly. You can see the image appearing there and I'll get another piece of clean cloth and buff off the ink from the embossed image. So you can do this with all non-permanent inks. If I was to put a permanent ink on there, such as a Stazon ink or a Ranger Archival ink, I think that ink would stick and stay on the raised embossed portion. For my next technique, I'm going to do a faux letterpress technique. So I've got my Distress Oxide here. This is Kitsch Flamingo and I'm going to blend it onto a stencil without any paper underneath. You could put paper underneath if you wanted to get a two for one. You could add the ink onto your stencil using a brayer perhaps. But the idea is here to cover the stencil itself with ink. And I'm going to use my cuttle bug for this. So I've got a thick plate, a bit of paper as a shim, a cutting plate, then my rubber embossing mat. Now a piece of card. Now my stencil inky side down. Once it's down, I don't want to move it. And then the other cutting plate. So I'm using the stencil basically as a stamp, but I'm also going to emboss or dry emboss the image. So that has stamped the stencil image in pink ink onto the card, but it's also pushed the card up through the stencil to give it a raised texture. So the white areas are raised and the pink areas are embossed or debossed, whichever way you want to look at it. You can do the same thing with dies. So if you ink up your die, you can do the back like this. I'll just pounce a bit to get rid of any streaks. Pick up your die, pop it down on your card, and then run that through your die cutting machine. And there you have your image from the back of your butterfly pressed down into there and embossed as well. So you've got a very dimensional, colourful image. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to use my brayer to ink up my butterfly because I don't want to get ink on the recessed area. Take a piece of card, lay that inky side down and run that through the machine again. And there we have our debossed or embossed image with very thin lines where the cutting lines of the die are. So I think that's really pretty. So I want to use my grip mat again, but I've got this lovely pattern on it. And I'm gonna use it a bit like a gel plate, I guess, and just place that over the top and pick up as much ink as I can. So there we've got a little print. So I'm using this a bit like a stamp. And I'm gonna mist it now, add a little bit of water, do the same again. I don't want to waste that lovely ink or that pattern. Now I've got a softer, slightly more diffuse pattern. And now I'll clean it all off. 
So my last technique for today is to use found items for stamping. So I've got some bubble wrap here. I can put some ink on that. I could use oxides, Catherine Pula inks. Just try not to contaminate them with each other. And then press that down and use it as a stamp. So they have a lovely pattern. I'll give this a bit of a spritz to activate the remaining ink and press it down again. And now I've got a bit more, again, diffuse, lighter pattern. I've got a bottle cap here. This is the one I used, was it yesterday's video, I think? You can pick up ink and stamp like that. And I can use a pen lid again. When you're picking up ink from, say, the Catherine Poole ink pad or any ink pad that is foam rather than felt, be a lot carefuler. A lot carefuler? A lot more careful because they're delicate and they can be damaged really easily. The felt pads, the ones in the Distress Oxides, are much more robust and you can be a bit more heavy handed with those. You could use the end of a pen. The fun thing about this particular pen is that there is some writing on it. So you're getting a found, detailed stamp. What does it say? Made in Japan. I've got an empty roll of washi tape here. stamp with the bottom of a bottle. I know I'm just using circles here but don't limit yourself to circles. Stamp with a coffee cup. You could take the edge of something like a gift card or an old store card, ink up the edge and add some lines. I'm using a rectangular die because I don't have a old gift card to hand but you can go around your home and rummage through absolutely everything go around your kitchen your bathroom your office and find things that you can stamp with you can create truly unique backgrounds like that so there we have lots of ways of stamping with inks you can also use embossing folders to stamp with inks, but we'll come on to that in a later video. What I'm going to do now is make a card for you, taking you through the whole process. And then at the end of the video, I'll also include some photos of other cards that I've made out of this. So I hope you can stick around for a little bit longer and I will be back in a tick when I've decided what card I'm going to make. I've decided to make an aperture card. So I've cut this aperture using this die. And I've also neatened up the stamping that I did today, just so it's easier to see what I've got. And I'm thinking of having this wet watercolour stamping technique panel behind, because it's really pretty and ethereal. I could do a bit more stamping on it. But I'm thinking, I like it as it is, but I will do some splattering. And I use this very pale gold metallic paint to do that. This is my Prima Metallic Accents Hybrid Palette. It's got paints in it from the Originals Palette and the Pastel Palette. And I give that a quick dry with my hairdryer. I want to create a bit of separation between the front and the back, but I don't want to add a whole layer of craft foam. So I've got a bit of card here that I can fit behind there. And I'll adhere that with some high tech PVA glue. And I want a little bit here and a little bit here to keep everything level. And now I'll add some glue around this edge here, which is the bit that's going to be in contact with the background. And so we'll pop that there. I can 
slice this spare bit off here. Okay, so I want to use that later. And now I can adhere this to the front of a 5x7 card blank. I'm not going to have any border on this. And I think what I'll do is cut some label banner shapes out of this more bright panel. So I've got two banner label things here, which I'm going to stick down. These just provide a little bit of contrast, but still tie into the background. And I've also cut these branchy things using these dies just from smooth white cardstock. And I'll use these as well, layer these on top. Add a little bit of glue here and there. So I think it's too much with both branches on. So we'll just stick with one. And to sit on top of my leafy thing there, I'm going to use this butterfly die. So there's my butterfly. I'm going to do my usual trick of sticking it onto vellum to give it a little bit of solidity, but still allowing it to be translucent. I've sponged some high tech PVA on the back. And now I will cut it out. To add some shimmer and shine to him I'm going to spatter on some of the pale gold that I used in the background and I'll stick him here using the PVA glue. For my sentiment I've got this happy birthday stamp. I've got my card pushed right into the corner so that I can stamp it more than once if necessary. And I'm thinking Kitsch Flamingo. This is a silicon stamp. And Distress Oxides don't always stamp brilliantly on silicon stamps. They prefer rubber or photopolymer. But we will see how it goes. That's looking okay. Yeah, and that will do. So that's another reason to use a stamp positioner. If you've got inks and stamps that aren't 100% compatible, you can stamp them multiple times to get the result you want. And to give my butterfly a body, I'm going to add some pale gold Nouveau drops. Just a row of little dots all the way up to the top there. And I'll add a few around and about. And that's this card finished. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with your inks and stamps. Stick around for a couple more minutes if you can because I'm going to share some photos of all the other cards I made with the panels that we stamped on today. In tomorrow's video we're going to be looking at gel printing with inks. I do have a whole series on gel printing so this will be a kind of whistle stop tour gel printing video. So I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.